Okay, so I'm Marty Shuckman. This is uh, Ross Bellock. We are here today to talk about uh, accelerating your deployment to Office 365. Um, I know I had a chance to meet, we had a chance to meet some of you last night, or some folks last night. So real quickly, just so we get a pulse of the audience, right, because we could talk endlessly about all this, but I really want to make sure you guys are walking away with information that you're looking for. So two things. One, I'm going to ask some questions just to give us some reference, and two, Raise your hand, jump up, shout out, stop us. We could talk to the slides all day, but I really want to make sure we're, giving, we're getting the answers to questions. And honestly, it's the anecdotal, it's the unique things that you're going to ask that have a lot of meaning to this overall process. So first and foremost, who here is from a customer versus a partner? So let's start with partners. Anybody here from partners? OK, so let's, let's call it 5 or 10%. Um, for those that are here as customers, are you already on Office 365 on any workload? Congratulations. Thank you very much. We appreciate your business. Kind of. Um, like <laughs> so just curiosity, how many started with Exchange? Yeah, normal, normal stuff. Yeah. Um, how many of you are less than 1,000 seats? OK. So what we're going to talk about, the, the concepts, the adoption, and everything, really works across all companies of all sizes. And trust me, I've worked with some of the largest on the planet, and I've worked with small ones as well. The concepts are the same. The bureaucracy, the politics, the ownership, and we'll talk about that a little bit. Those things are different for sure, but it's similar. It's the same concepts. Let's go ahead. Everybody has seen this, something like this slide before, right? You know, world is accelerating, things are, or things are moving faster than they have previously. Um, how do you keep up? It's all about change. And your commitment, your investment in Office 365 is about talking acceleration, right? It's faster time to value, hopefully lowering the cost of ownership, hopefully driving more um, productivity to your end users, right? All the marketing stuff we talk about, but quite honestly, it's all true. Um, but this curve can be a little daunting, especially as you're starting to see things move uh, you know, faster and faster. Um, there's always this question of, well, OK, so we're going to move to Office 365. Well, we've done Exchange upgrades before. It's a little different. Or we're coming from Lotus Notes or GroupWise or Gmail or whatever. Um, you know that there's going to be roadblocks, right? It's great that everybody says, hey, let's move to Office 365. Here's five reasons why we want to do it. Then all of a sudden, you start running into issues with your security team. You start running into issues that were unforeseen. You start, you know, you think you know what you need to do technically, but then all of a sudden, procedurally or from an adoption perspective, it's not going as you would expect. Um, it's just migrating mail. How hard can it be, right? And for those that have done Exchange, you're already, you're already laughing. It's like, holy smokes, it was harder than we thought. Um, now you're thinking about moving your SharePoint files or Gmail or your Google Drives or whatever it is, and it's like. There's nothing exciting about moving data, but yet you have to do it. And again, we'll talk about how Fast Track can help. Um, it's going to be complicated and expensive. Microsoft only sells to me. OK, well, um, I have no comment on that. Um, other than we want you to use the service. We believe in the service. We use the service. right? So the things that you feel about updates and coming out quickly and how do I keep up on the new features and capabilities, well, we're, we're no different. Uh, we have the same challenges. Um, and then this idea that you're going to do one workload at a time. Hey, we're going to do exchange. So let's ask that. How many have done at least two workloads? See? I think there's like four of you. Right? So you did exchange and you stopped. Or you did Office Pro Plus and you stopped. So something is stopping you from moving to that next or secondary workload, right? What is that? And we'll, you know, we'll talk about some of the things to think about to accelerate the adoption. Go ahead, Ross. Um, we call this the four by four. It's simple stuff, right? There's nothing up here on this slide that is going to be a surprise to you. What's the surprise is you probably haven't done it, right? You know, do you have, have you made a commitment to the organization when the service will be available, a real date, not just a, you know, kind of we'll Q1, right? Have you made a real date? Um, have you understood what the value to the users, to the business is, other than, well, we were going to have to upgrade Exchange 2010 to 2013 or 2016, wouldn't it be great if we could just move it to the cloud? So you basically moved to Office 365 because you had to do an upgrade anyway. That's a good reason, but it's hard to drive that as a compelling business case. Um, 
who made the commitment? And again, some of the organizations that are smaller, right, it's really easy to find out who the owner is. When you get into some of the larger customers, you know, you might have had a CIO who made a decision, but the CISO and the security teams don't report to the CIO for whatever crazy reason. So now all of a sudden the CIO is telling you things that we need to do to get to the service, and now the security teams or the marketing teams or the legal teams are creating blockers, and that also slows down adoption, right? So who's the guy or gal who made the commitment, we're going to do this, and we're going to invest our time and energy and emotions to make it happen? Do you know who that person is? Do you meet with them on a regular basis? Do you drive that to them? So I'm going to stop there. How many know who the success owner is in their business that they are trying to drive Office 365 to? Okay, about 10% of you. Um, and then it, it comes down to these items along the, bo the bottom, right? You've developed or you rolled out one workload. Do you have use case and scenarios of why you would roll out the second or third? You're paying for it, right? Unless you bought Exchange alone, which most people don't. You bought the suite, so you have Exchange and SharePoint and OneDrive and maybe Office Pro Plus and Skype. What's stopping you? Is it you know, a technical hurdle? Hey, we're heavily invested in Cisco. We have all these devices, so moving to Skype, it sounds great, but there's a big hill to climb. Or is it just because you just haven't made the, you know, the business case or you haven't worked through the logistics? Or it's so painful you haven't figured out who can help you do it? In a hit, and that's why we're here. <laughs> Let's go to the next slide. Um, this may also may be obvious, but again, it really ties to the message of why we created Fast Track, a customer success center. Put simply, those that plan for usage get more usage. Those that, you remember the old uh, Field of Dreams you know, movie with Kevin Costner? Build it and they will come? Eh, eh, doesn't work that way. So if you plan for usage around Exchange, you'll get better usage. If you plan for usage around Skype, you'll get usage. If you basically throw it out there or take the approach that, it's just like it was on-prem, or it's just like the other product we used. The problem is your users will not change the behavior that they have. Now, people are always scared that, well, our users can't ha can handle change, right? You know, and, and again, for those that are on this service, you're seeing the, you know, the, the, the service update on a monthly basis, right? You're seeing all the new features and capabilities. You're keeping up on the roadmap. You're seeing all this change. And for some people, it scares them. Yet at the same time, and of course I'm a Microsoft guy, but I have my lovely iPhone, which I think is awesome. Um, this thing changes all the time. Apps are updating all the time. You know what? People get used to it. Again, there's business processes we have to balance against. But let's not lose sight of the fact that change is inevitable, and it gets back to that first slide, accelerating change. So we want to create a culture of change, and then at the same time show people how they can use the service or the tools to be more productive. Let's go to the next slide. So Fast Track is the, <laughs> is the customer success service designed to help you move faster with confidence, realize business value faster. Ultimately, you bought the service. We are a, we're always hesitant, hesitant to say free because everyone assumes free has these connotations. We are part of the benefit of the service. You bought SKUs, right? You bought licenses. You get service. Skype, SharePoint, you get the features and functions. Think of Fast Track as part of the service that you purchased. And the difference, though, is we are not pure automation and engineering. We are also human beings. You saw in the intro presentation, 600 people worldwide who are here to help customers get onto the service, plan to get on the service, get onto the service, migrate your data to the service, and adopt and use the service. That is why we exist. We don't have contracts. We don't sell you things above and beyond. Our job is to give you this additional assistance. Next slide. Again, this role, this plan shouldn't look too different than how you would do any other IT type function. You're going to envision it. You're going to figure out the requirements. You're going to figure out what are the keys to success. How do you know you were successful? How do you know when you got there? Right? Hopefully, you have a plan in place. We're going to go through an onboarding set of um, technologies. Um, these are tools, and all these tools are available to you today. The difference is you have to go figure out where they are. You have to figure out what they are. With Fast Track, we will help you. Hey, you're at this point in the process. Let's take a look at your identity. We want to run ID Fix. Well, how do I run ID Fix? We can show you through screen share. Hey, this is how you run ID Fix. Uh, <laughs> I should have closed my Outlook. Um, 
and then, you know, how do you, what do you do with those results? How do you know what the next steps are? Again, that's part of the process of Fast Track is to help you through those steps because we've done this dozens and dozens of times. I was gonna say, need to, we'll see what happens. Um, and then of course we wanna drive value, so we'll talk about how do you drive user engagement. Let's go to the next slide. Um, is anybody here with less than 50 seats? Okay, there's plenty of material online. <laughs> it's not that we don't love you. Um, so you can still go to the same site, fasttrack.microsoft.com, you can see all the content. The difference though is a lot of it is more self-service but the same material, there's nothing that we, hey, it's secret, we're not gonna show it to you because you have less than 50 seats. It's the same material as there. You may just have to, if you need additional assistance, work with one of the, the partners in the room, for example, who can assist. Um, but our goal with the material is to make it very easy to follow, a lot of wizards, um, so that you can not have to be super, super, super technical to go through the basic onboarding activities. Caveat, asterisk, footnote. If you have a very complex environment, it's more complex, right? If you have a simple, hey, if you're under 50 users, you might be just doing cloud ID, so you have no federation, no active directory. Your message hygiene, your mail flow, and all this other gobbledygook we could talk about for hours, don't worry about any of that because it doesn't apply to you. As you get to the larger organizations, you know, hey, we have all these complex systems, we've done this with Active Directory, we didn't like ADFS, we went with ping. You know, all these other scenarios exist, and we can help you through those, but again, it gets a little bit more complicated. Um, for those that are on email, did you come from Exchange on-premises? Yes? How many came from, you know, something else? Google, Gmail, uh, Notes. So, notes. Um, Yes, there are still notes out there. It's hard to believe <laughs> after all these years. Um, part of the, you know, so then we get into the, the change there could be different because if, if you're on Outlook and you're on Exchange, users moving over, you know, a lot of times it's, hey, we didn't notice a difference other than our mailbox is bigger. That may be okay if that was your success criteria. I don't want to disturb my users. I just want to get them on the service. Um, you come from notes or Gmail and you're not used to using Outlook. Again, it's an adoption activity. Outlook is a different animal. Um, and again, we also now support moving SharePoint Box and Google Drive. Uh, we also, and it's not up there, we also will do, um, we have some offerings around uh, moving SharePoint sites. Again, that gets a little bit more complex depending on what you've done to SharePoint on premises. Let's go to the next slide. This isn't our first year in the rodeo. We've been doing this for a couple of years, so starting in 2013, I was gonna quote our fiscal years, but you don't care. Um, in 2013, we really started doing a, you know, more deployment guidance. Um, starting in 2014, we really started driving into um, remote assistance. And then as we started moving forward, now we're, you know, we're a full-blown customer success center. Really, the difference as we move from 2014 to the past you know, year or two is just getting your mailboxes on the service doesn't mean we're done. You have to be using it. You have to be using SharePoint or using Skype. Um, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, but there's no time limit. As long as you are actively paying for the licenses, you can come back as many times as you want. If you say, hey, you've, you've helped us great, we're gonna go into six months of other stuff, can you check back with us in six months? Sure. Um, you know, again, our goal is to be here to help you get value out of the service. We want you to get value out of the service as quickly as possible. If you're taking you know, a year to migrate 1,000 people, we're gonna have an opinion about it. Don't, don't take it personally, we're gonna have an opinion about it. Um, but we really want you to get onto the service, getting value, get out of that hybrid state. But then there are times that organizations just say, hey, we, we just need to go a little slower. Let's go to the next slide. You're up. I'm up. So, so now we're gonna dive a little deeper into uh, some of the, the phases that Marty was talking about, right? So, so in the Envision phase, um, you know, he, he said how many people know who your key stakeholders are. I'm assuming because it's a technical conference, virtually everybody in the room's from IT. Anybody not from the IT org here? No, one, right? 
of the stakeholders, right, um, and I'll, I'll come back to you in a second, but <laughs> of the stakeholders, um, how many of you have stakeholders that are really the drivers for this that are outside the IT organization, right? Who's, who's making the decision that Office 365 has value for the business? Anyone outside the IT org? One, two, three. Right, um, so I, I'd be curious to hear kind of what some of those cases are, but, but more often than not, that's what we see is um, the decision to make this move comes from IT, it's, you know, um, or, or per purchasing, right? Some, somebody came in and it was, you know, $20 a month to do it this way and $18 a month to do it this way, so we're gonna go $18 a month and, that, and IT finds out later that you even own these licenses, right? So, so that's, um, it's a big challenge when, when you're just given this product, you're, you're given this. Uh, and, and if the driver for moving is just, we're gonna take our mail and we're gonna move it from here to here, that can have value, right? We're, we're getting, um, you know, you're, you're getting some of your storage back, you don't have to back it up anymore, there, there's value in that. But, but the Office 365 platform is so much bigger than, than just any individual workload that really the value is when you, when you have a business case for it and, and you work with the business users to, to envision how this is gonna make your, your business better. And ultimately, for, for most people, our business better means it's gonna run more efficiently and the company's gonna make more money. Right? How can Office 365 help your company make more money? And if you find the right business users to help you do that, that's, that's gonna make the entire organization happier. Right? Um, so, so a lot of what we hear from people that, that have put up one workload, right? they, they migrated email, it's, it's there, um, and then they get stuck there, is we, don't, we really don't know where to begin. Um, so one of the things that Microsoft has invested in is, is building out these scenarios, and, and these are absolutely not the only things that you can be doing, but, but there's some scenarios to help you get started. And, and this has helped drive adoption in a lot of these organizations. If, if you can get your, your business users engaged and, and you can identify some specific cases, um, you know, we want our users to be able to work more easily mobile. We want it to be secure. We want them to be able to work from anywhere or not from anywhere, right? We want them to be able to get things done from around the globe, but only certain things from this part of the globe because, it's, because there's you know, some security concerns. Um, if you identify the scenarios, uh, it, it really makes this process much easier. And so what Microsoft is invested in is, is building out some kind of pre-built scenarios to help you get started. The, the other part is, um, you know, and, and actually now this comes back to our, our non-IT person in the room. Um, it, you know, when you've got corporate communications, you, you're trying to get um, adoption throughout your, throughout, throughout your organization. Everybody in IT is, has been, had somebody from corporate communications or HR come and say, okay, you know, do you have, do you have any training materials I can send out? How, you know, what's the message? What's the timeline? One of the things that, that we've done is we've put together um, scenarios both by, by department, right? So, so here's some scenarios that, for, that are common to finance, mm -hmm. but then also by some verticals, by industry that can help you, um, that, that can help you. And th so this is called the productivity library. And if you come in here and say, okay, great, we're, you know, we're a financial services organization and marketing's really interested in getting going, um, it's gonna filter this down and help you find, identify some scenarios which will tell you not only how to get people moving, but also which workloads you need to get up and running, um, you know, what, and maybe if, if you need it secure, you know, not only do we need Exchange and, and Skype for business, but we also need to get Intune up and running so we can manage people's mobile devices. Right. So, so this is a, a great tool, not only for the IT department, but for the entire organization. So I encourage you to go out to this Fast Track Center and, um, and work with your Fast Track you know, team to, to come out here and, and find these materials that'll help, help your organization, help you help your organization to get this adoption and, and to really build some of the, the business cases internally. Yep, hang on a second. The, oh, where are we? No, I, I clicked two. Clicked two? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so what we found, and, and Marty mentioned this earlier, right? If you have a plan going in, if you have a plan for success, you have a plan on how you're gonna get adoption, you get better adoption. Um, you know, one of the things that we see too often is, is a lot of analysis paralysis. We spend forever thinking about it, and you know, how are we gonna do it? How's it gonna be perfect? Try to remove some of the blockers. Get people on the service, and then, and then let it kind of grow from there. 
Um, what we found is if you don't have a plan, this is what happens, right? You have delays in implementation. You get one workload up and running and then you get stuck. And you're paying, you're paying for the service, you should be using it. You should be getting all the benefits and advantage of, of the service that you're paying for, right? Um, you get lower utilization, you know, all of these are time after time we see if you don't have a plan, this is what happens. The, the other tool that you'll find, one of the other tools that you'll find in, in the Fast Track Center, and, um, and your, um, your account team will also help work with, with you on this, um, this is meant to be collaborative, is a, a success planning tool. So if you go in, you can build a customer success plan that says here are the workloads we want to deploy, um, here's the timeline, and it builds out not you know, a, a high-level project plan for you, but then it really gives you a step-by-step -step framework to work through to, to be able to deliver those timelines and the, the, the guides to your, your customers, right, your, your employees, to say this is when this is going to come out, this is when this feature is going to be available, and, and be able to deploy it. So, um, so if you haven't ever seen this before, talk to your account team about building a customer success plan to help you take advantage of, of the entire suite that you're paying and, for. And for the customers that are smaller, where you don't necessarily have an account team, a designated account team, um, you can hit fasttrack.microsoft.com. We're gonna show you this. We're gonna let this, uh, I'm gonna try to let this go here. Uh, okay, so you can watch as it goes. Th this is really just that portal. Um, it's not the most scintillating thing in the world to watch a screen that has a bunch of clicks. Uh, but as Ross was saying, this is the fast track portal. This allows you to build your success plan. And that's, that's the key element here. This is your plan. Put as much detail into it or as little detail into it as you choose. But our recommendation is, you know, follow the template. Be thoughtful about trying to look at all the things that it's asking you. You know, does it, do you want to have, you know, which audiences are you serving? Which products do you want to roll out? When do you want to roll it out? Are you trying to collaborate? Are you trying to save dollars? What are your reasons? And it doesn't mean that there's no, there's no commitment, right? This isn't a commitment. This is just getting you to be thoughtful about the reasons you're taking this journey so that you can look and say, hey, we were successful, or hey, if we missed the mark on something, why did we miss the mark on something? And, and that's okay, but at least it gets you thinking broadly about all the capabilities that the service has to offer. When you start looking across Exchange and SharePoint and OneDrive and Skype, and now you start looking across Planner and Teams and the My Analytics, and you start looking across, and now I'm gonna start getting scary, right? EMS and Intune and advanced threat protection, all these capabilities that are in the service, it's overwhelming. I mean, it truly, it truly can be. So the idea is start looking at a plan, start looking at the material that's available to you so you can, so you can plan appropriately, um, or at least find out where do you have gaps, right? Again, the fast track teams are here to provide you that assistance and that guidance, but at the end of the day, you have to do the work. And if the work is you know, something that you can't do or not prepared to do, partners or Microsoft Consulting Services or other folks are available to assist, but you'll always have that guidance from the fast track teams. So and this is just going through, you know, here's the success plan. You could put in whatever your description is. You could talk about you know, which products are you looking at. Um, it's great to have dates, right? Challenge yourself a little bit, put some dates in there and say, hey, we want to get on the service in six weeks or 10 weeks or 12 weeks or four weeks or whatever, whatever it is you're trying to achieve. But if you don't put dates around it, you know, there's nothing that's gonna drive folks through it. The other thing I'd be, you know, be mindful of is you have to have people available to do the work. So if everybody has a full-time job and there's nobody who owns doing this transition, you know, your results are gonna, are gonna not meet expectation most likely. Unless your expectation was, I'm gonna spend two years doing it, which then we're back to, really? <laughs> we should be having a conversation around that. Um, before we keep going, are, are there questions so far? I mean, you know, I, I always hate talking to people as opposed to engaging. Yes? Are there any differences between Microsoft Showcase overlapping material for the planning uh, features that are on Microsoft Showcase right now? I have no idea. What, the question is, is there any difference between, I guess, the fast track information and Microsoft Showcase? I have no idea what Microsoft Showcase is. Um, so maybe there's a difference? <laughs> um, <laughs> So I, I will tell you the fast track site, the fast track material is all focused on onboarding, uh, you, migrating, and adopting the service. Um, I know we have lots of partner sub channels, so it's possible showcase is part of that. I, I simply don't know. 
other questions or other, you know, for people who had, who've already done some onboarding, you know, does any of this resonate with what you've seen in your experiences? Here's a question, right? So for the people that have, you know, that are on, on Office 365, has anybody used Fast Track? Has anybody, we've got a couple. Is this kind of aligned with the experience that you had? Was we are still in the process. Still in the process? Okay. So how big is your company? We are about 400 mailboxes. Okay. So you have a Fast Track manager and a Fast Track engineer? Yes, uh, five months. For the last five months. Have not migrated yet. It clearly wasn't a plant by us because we wouldn't have had 400 mailboxes in five months. We would have said, let's get something faster. But I'm assuming you're working through whatever those. Because, uh, we're running into complexities given the environment. We have multiple domains, okay. multiple kinds of mail servers. Yep, yep, okay. And, and, and again, you know, when, you, when you started with the plan, you know, some of this you may have said, hey, it's going to be easy. Or you may have said, you know, I don't know what your expectation was when you started. It may have been, hey, this is the opportunity to kind of simplify some of that, and trying to go from the complex to the simple takes time. Mm -hmm. So, yes, sir. One thing I'm seeing uh, is that the seats, but I'm also seeing a reference as well as the seat of the iPhone, because it's just like yes, it's free, but it's not free. Yeah. So there's there's different tiers, right? So. Um, if you have 50 seats or more, you qualify for fast track. Um, and and at, uh, at 50 seats, uh, you're primarily you're getting, um, you know, you're getting a fast track manager and a fast track engineer, and they're providing you with some guidance about, um, about your migration. At, uh, the next tier would be at 150 seats, and once you have 150 seats, now you also qualify for uh, a migration benefit where they'll actually move the data for you. Um, you know, they'll move your email for you, they'll move your file shares up to OneDrive for business, um, they'll help you set up your, your, SharePoint, um, your, your SharePoint environment and help you move some SharePoint library content over. So, so that's that next tier. And then the next tier above that is, is way up there, and that's at 20,000 seats, and then there's some enhanced benefits that you also get at, at 20,000 seats, like assistance with a global ADFS infrastructure and some things that just don't really apply typically to smaller organizations. Um, you know, when you talk about the difference between E3 and E5, really it's just what your, what your entitlements are, right? So if, if you're not on, um, if you're on E3, you're not gonna have entitlements around um, cloud PBX services because you don't have cloud PBX services, so Fast Track can't help you with it. But as long as you, the, the tiers are all based basically on, on seat counts. Did that answer the question? Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, so I, I guess I have a couple of, or several questions, but this is, and I've been playing with this for almost two years now, trying to get it rolled out, and I'm totally out of my seat. And this is the first time I've heard, I've heard about fast track, I've heard about I, I had no clue, we got 26 other licenses. Okay. No, absolutely not, right? So, so on the Fast Track website, you can actually um, do a request straight from there, and, and I think uh, we may even have that in the, in the video, the, one of the videos coming up, but you could do a request right there for assistance, um, and we, I, if we get with it afterwards, I can show you how to do that. Um, or at 2,600 seats, you may, you know, if you have an account team, they might be able to help you with that as well. Yeah, but effectively, you will get a Fast Track manager and a Fast Track engineer to help guide you through the process, but keep going. Mm -hmm. How do you classify a service? Is Office 365, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff in there. So, so we break it down into high level into Exchange and Skype and SharePoint, uh, OneDrive, Office Pro Plus, um, Teams. Teams. Um, so it, it's those core capabilities, and each one's a little bit different, right? With Exchange, typically you're moving mail. With OneDrive, 
you may have file shares and you may say, hey, can you move the files over? You know, my, my G drive, my home drive, can you move the, those files over for every user? Um, Skype might just be, can, basically you're enabling the service. You'd have to deploy the Skype client, right, which would be on you to do. Um, but enabling the service, again, would give you the guidance on enabling the service, but there's nothing to migrate. Teams, nothing to migrate currently. So each one's a little bit different, but it's those core services. And, and up on the site, you will see a service description. Just like there's a service description for Office 365 itself, right, for Exchange and SharePoint, there's a service description for Fast Track. It tells you pretty clearly, this is what Microsoft will do to assist you, and this is what your responsibilities are. And together, we go forth and get you on the service, get you using the service. Yeah, and we have a slide coming up that, that it's actually one of my favorite slides, not because of the content at all, but, but it you know, has kind of those two sections, right? Here's Microsoft's responsibilities, here's your responsibilities. One thing that's really important to understand about Fast Track is um, not only what it is, but what it isn't, right? So, so it's a different experience than, uh, you know, we've hired a consulting firm, they're gonna come in, they, you know, they've upgraded us in the past from Exchange 2010 to Exchange 2013, and, and they set up the servers, and they installed the operating system, and they moved the mailboxes, and they did everything, and they sat in a, a conference room with us for 10 hours doing that, right? That's, that's a different experience with Fast Track. It's, um, Fast Track is a remote service, you get, um, you, you have this Fast Track manager who's uh, a, a, a typically non-technical project manager who um, can help you with a lot of things like adoption and, and really building those business cases inside your org. And then you get a Fast Track engineer who's the person who's gonna work with your technical team. They'll do screen shares if you need, so there's a tool. Uh, now we're going way out of, out of order for the slides, so this is gonna mess <laughs> things up. Right, so, but he so, asked a good question. But he, he really did, right? So, so one, of the, you know, one of the tools that, that you run as part of this process is called ID Fix, right? And it'll scan your Active Directory environment, look for any objects that aren't gonna be compatible to synchronize to the cloud. So you know, we want you to run that. You're gonna have an output from it. You'll provide it to the, to the Fast Track team, and they'll do some analysis on it to, uh, to help you figure out what remediation has to happen. If you have a problem figuring out how to run that, they'll do a screen share with you, but, but at no point is your Fast Track engineer gonna say, okay, great, let me, uh, you know, give, give me a username and password, I'm gonna log in, and I'm gonna run ID fix. That's, that's not the Fast Track experience, right? So, and, and as a customer, you're entitled to any experience you want for your migration. If, if you either don't have the resources internally or you, you, know, you, you don't have availability, whatever it is, and you want somebody to be hands-on keyboard, that's, that's why there's all their alternatives, right? Marty mentioned earlier, right? There's partner community that can help you with that. There's Microsoft Consulting Services. Uh, you know, for some of the larger organizations, you might have premier services that you, you can use for that. You, and you can use, um, most of the partners are really good at working with the Fast Track Center. So, you know, maybe they can help you with some of the components that, um, that you're struggling with that you need somebody on site. But then when it comes to actually migrating the mailboxes, you don't need to pay them $200 an hour to do that. You can have the Fast Track Center do that part of it for you. Yeah, not so much gamification, but, um, and, and the video that rolled, um, you could see when you, um, when you go in and pick some of those scenarios from the product productivity library, um, in that list of things that it would show were some videos, some training links. Um, so, so a lot of that material is there, and that's, that's, all, um, that's all investment that Microsoft has made to help get adoption. The, the days where Microsoft was happy that you bought a license are gone. That, that, So, good, no, it's a good question. So there's two sides to this. One is we provide IP and content to you, the IT coordinator, partner, that you can then take and customize or figure out how to basically arrange it for the needs of your organization, right? Because each group learns differently. IT is different than HR, which is different than kiosk workers or, or what the scenario is. In addition, we can point out that there's a handful of Microsoft public facing sites that you could point your users to. Hey, you have information, you want, you want to know how to use Excel, you want to know how to use Word. Now, but, but, but let's be fair, right? There's a whole training ecosystem out there wrapped around what we do. So we provide some information, and then if it doesn't fit the needs, there's lots of third parties that provide additional information. The other way I'd view it is we provide content, we don't create curriculum. 
So think of it that way, right? We have lots of content, tons of information. But the curriculum for your organization, well, this doesn't fit the bill, but I need this, and I want to make sure that they do this before they do that. We're putting that back on you to figure out what is best for your organization. But in terms of content, in terms of flyer examples, um, in terms of, you know, hey, how do you groom champions? We're going to talk about that a little bit later. Mm -hmm. There's information that's available, but it's up to you to execute it. Yeah. And right? what we find with most organizations is you, you probably have a hybrid approach. You, know, for, for you, you kind of put your users into buckets, and for 70% of your users, these materials are perfectly sufficient. Right? For your high power users, your, your exact, you know, admin exact, exact admin people, they need a little more. And, and so you know, maybe you actually send them to a class, or you bring somebody in to do that kind of training for that small group of users, but, but the materials that we're providing will give you most of your org. So uh, it, the question is, do you also give like a brainstorm, which is a third party company, a 90 day subscription? That may vary depending, because you, you got one. So that is not through fast track. That would either come through other Microsoft promotions or account teams or something else. But again, if you have a Microsoft account team, you should always ask the question, hey, you know, what, do you have any offers or anything going on? It's something we can take advantage of, take a look at what's going on through blogs and other things. Uh, but that, the specific 90 day was not through did, okay, then somebody, somebody got it from the account team for you. Because yeah. it's not one of the go-to things that we offer. But no, it's, but that's a great, I mean, it, you know, how, how do you drive usage, right? And Braintree is, it's basically a set of tools that you would host on SharePoint, which drives people to use SharePoint to go get the training of the material, right? So again, you're serving two, serving two roles. Um, any other quick questions before we keep going? Okay. So this is the slide I was talking about, okay. right? So, um, so, you know, Fast Track includes. You're going to have access to the Fast Track engineers. They're going to help you do configuration on on what we t we refer to to as uh, your core onboarding, right? So making sure that your your firewall is is got the right ports open, that you've um, done a, an assessment on what your network requirements are and the bandwidth requirements. Um, you know, email migration, as I said, for 150 seats or more. Um, You'll see the word guidance a lot, right? Again, it's not hands-on keyboard. We're helping you. We're giving you advice. We're giving you guidance. We're giving you some remote assistance, but we're not. Um, we aren't. It's not a support organization, right? So if you hit something in your internal environment that is just, it's just broken, right? It's, it's for, you're going to have to, you know, either use Premier Hours if you have them, open a support ticket. The engineer will help you if they can, but but it's not a support organization. It's not what it's designed for. It's it's designed to really help you get onboarded and moving as quickly as, as possible. Um, you know, the templates and guidance, but then wh what does the customer have to do, right? So I mentioned the ID fix tool before. We identify some things that, that maybe need to be updated. We can give you some scripts to do it in bulk, but you need to schedule your, you know, with your change control board and you need to run the tools, right? That, that's the, the customer. So it, it's, it's a synergistic um, relationship between Fast Track and the customer, or, um, customer itself. And it says customer or partner because a lot of people, again, don't have the internal resources to do that, so they engage a partner to help with some of those components. Okay, I'm going to start from the top left and read this to you. <laughs> Maybe not. Um, so, so really, the, it, it, this is actually a fantastic slide that has way too much information on it. But um, what, what the, the purpose of this is to really show, right, here's, here's the... the um, the resources that are going to be involved in the different stages um, and, and the different workloads as you go across and, and what can be involved. But, but throughout it, um, you're going to see a, a consistency that it's, you know, you have the team, you have internal resources that are working with that team, and, and here's, you know, here's what we're going to get done at these different phases. The, the biggest thing that Fast Track can help you with is, is getting people moving and getting them on the service and then, and then you, can, you can help them to, um, to start leveraging that service down the road. Um, once they're on, it, it's much easier to, to, to start to get some benefit from it, and people will they'll start clicking around. They'll start playing with it. They'll, they'll use it. Um, so that's, that's probably the biggest thing that, that we can help you with. There's a little bit more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this is where we could 
pick one, this is the which which workload or one of so some folks were on exchange or had moved through exchange so this this just provides an example of if you engage with fast track the activity that we would do that we are providing to with you the assistance we would be providing with you and as Ross mentioned you know it could be hey we'll help give you guidance on how to configure your DNS and your firewall in the end you have to go and do it but we will you know we will work together with you and for those companies of any size the information is all published it's all but sometimes it just doesn't resonate or you have to go into a little bit more detail is there anybody with uh, more than 20,000 seats no. okay and, 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 and that gets into a whole licensing conversation on how you buy and stuff. But so there, and you'll see up on the site when you go above twenty thousand seats, there's some additional benefits. Not that those things aren't important for all customers, but we we kind of put a, a line and say, hey, if you're above twenty thousand seats, there's some additional things that we would do, um, or additional assistance you will get. One of those is my particular. Yeah, one role. of those is Marty. You yeah, get Marty. <laughs> So as a fast track program manager, everybody gets a fast track manager and an engineer, as Ross described. When we get into the larger organizations, you also get a fast track program manager, just to provide some additional oversight and guidance and assistance. Um, and again, it depends on the organization size and structure and everything. And a else. winning smile. And a winning smile, absolutely. Um, but because there are just other levels of complexity as the organizations get into that, you know, global grander scale. Um, but you know, honestly, we've had customers who are 100,000 seats that are considerably less complex than a 3,000 seat customer. Um, I think the gentleman here in the front row was talking about all the you know multiple domains, multiple exchange sources, this, that, and the other thing. Well, you know, if you didn't have that complexity, but you only had 100,000 mailboxes, you know, at that point, it's just you just turn the crank a few more times. Right. So. Um, and again, we talk about that core onboarding and the adoption planning. The work is the same regardless of the number of seats and number of mailboxes. Um, some of these things where it talks about coming soon, and, and that's a key element, and, and we'll talk about it here momentarily as well, is the fast track benefit is changing all the time, just like the service is changing all the time. Um, I, I can't emphasize that enough, and it drives you know, I'm, for the partners in the room, <laughs> as well as for our own internal MCS teams, you know, we'll come along and say, we don't do SharePoint migrations. So then go to a partner, go to MCS. Well, this year we launched, we do SharePoint migrations. Again, there's some caveats to it. So now there's an opportunity for customers to get the benefit of what we offer, and, but it's an evolving service. Now, in the case of SharePoint specifically, if you've customized craziness in your SharePoint on-premises environment. You have third-party tools. The guy here is smiling. <laughs> you've created customized web parts. You've done all sorts of crazy stuff. It's not going to be us. It's, you might have to go to MCS or a partner to help you with that. Um, everything we do at Fast Track, we do at scale. So every night, we have thousands of customers who are, we are migrating mail for. Um, every day across the planet, we have you know, these hundreds of teams focusing on thousands of customers, helping them get onto the service. So when you see fast track launch new capabilities, it means we're doing it at scale across the planet. It's never, anything that becomes a very, very unique fringe case is gonna be the boundary with us, where we'd say, hey, you know, we're, not, we're not prepared to give you guidance, because we wanna make sure we're really good at it when we do it, we're not gonna be prepared to give you that guidance, and you're gonna have to look either to MCS Premier Partner or somebody else. Do you have a question, sir? So during, so I'm trying to think of the best way to answer this. So we always look at what's the impact, right? So you can call that risk. Um, I've told many a CEO, CIO, I've never lost a patient on the table, right? We used, we used to have this chart, we'd call an EKG chart, where it would be happiness versus time. And if you go into a, a onboarding exchange, SharePoint, Skype, a transformation that's going to touch every user in your organization, and you expect because Microsoft's done this thousands of times, it's going to be perfect and easy. Right there, your risk is wrong, right? I mean, there's, there's very few things you will do as an IT organization that is as invasive as updating something that touches every user, right? 
Update your accounting system, it impacts the accounting guys. Update your HR system, it impacts the HR, maybe a little self-service for your employees. But desktops, you know, email, it's everybody. So we will look at those risks with you. We will talk about the things that we've seen. We'll kind of try to help really hard to kind of peek around the corners. But nobody knows your business better than you do. We can just tell you from a technology and a recommendation perspective what you should do. Sorry, Ross. Yeah. No, I, I was going to say, right, so I had, uh, I had a customer, the, uh, the IT director of a 100,000 user organization that was, you know, the first workload they were doing was email. And uh, his statement on one of our calls was, I want this done with zero help desk calls. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, right? Thank You're you very all much. <laughs> yeah, zero help desk calls, 100,000 people moved. By the way, they're you know, a global organization, all, no chance, right? Zero chance that that is going to happen. Are we going to try to minimize it? Of course. Are we going to, you know, are we going to make sure that we, we don't lose valid email messages? Of course, right? Are corrupt messages maybe not going to make it across? Well, possibly, right? There, there's challenges. Um, but, but being realistic and setting those expectations with your users is, is really important and, and help it, and we can definitely help work because we have this experience. Um, that's, that's what we're there for is to say, here's where the risk is. Let's communicate that to your users. You know, here's where the pain is. Here's how long the pain's going to last. And here's when the pain's going to stop. Users are pretty accepting of that message. And, and you know, each of your businesses are different, right? So we've had customers who said, yeah, my users are going to have some pain, but you know what? It's just, it's just email. That's not their primary job function. <laughs> So let's just get this done because on the back end, we're going to save this, this, and this. We're going to have these benefits. Not for me to say, let's do changes that are going to impact your users and tell them to you know, deal with it. But that's, that's the, you know, the partnership that we have to have. We're going to tell you what we've seen work. We're going to tell you what the experiences have been. We're going to tell you where there'll be some pain. It's your business. So, um, you know, and you'll see this, you get, the decks will be posted, right? You know, this is just an example of a SharePoint. Again, different types of things that we would do to support you. And we have one for um, OneDrive, you know, one for Skype. Skype gets a little more complex, right? Because now all of a sudden you're talking, about, especially if you're trying to go Cloud PBX or PSTN, now you get into a lot of networking conversations, how good's your bandwidth, what kind of impacts are you going to have when you start having people roll out voice communication over your, inter you know, your current internet as opposed to email, which is running in a cache mode, or I am in presence, if you just stop at that. Um, so let's see. And then Office Pro Plus. How many people, anybody using Click to Run, Office Pro Plus, Click to Run? So you finding it a good experience for the users? Good experience for you? <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's always a tricky one as well. I mean, it's, there's a benefit to it, but then it's also things change on a more regular basis. I mean, you can, you know, you can do some tweaking in the, in the tenants. Um, there's information out there like first release and other things where you can control and flow the information of change. Um, but, you know, again, uh, again as, a, as a user at Microsoft, uh, we have click to run, and it's, you know, it's great. All of a sudden, new incremental things are coming out. A little pop-up says, hey, here's what's new. Um, so... I'm just going to keep going here. Yeah. Um, so, specifically for the, 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 the you know, our, our colleague in the back that had less than 50 users. Uh, <laughs> so, um, again, you'll see some examples here of just some of the wizards and what we're trying to do to make this simple, right? Um, so, this is an example of hey, you know, what kind of migration should you do? Yes, you can engage with Fast Track, and we'll tell you. There's different types of mail migration on, and different types of strategies to do it. So depending on if you're 20,000 plus seats versus 2,000 seats versus 500 seats, we might give you some different opinions on the different ways to do things and what the impacts might be. Um, somebody was asking me last night, if he asked the experts about, um, you know, hey, I have 50 users, should I set up hybrid? Uh, my answer was no. It's 50 users. It'll take you longer to set up hybrid than to probably do the 50 users. So why not just you know, do a flash cutover? Now, if they had 50 users and it's 50 gigabyte mailbox each, maybe it takes, again, it takes a little bit longer. But you know, again, depending on the size of the org, depending on the strategies, there's just tons of strategies. And we tried to wizify, is that a word? Tried to create wizards for everything so that we can together say, hey, what's the best way to do it? 
You can do this on your own. It doesn't have to be fast track stepping you through it. Or you can do it and say, hey, this is what we saw. And then when you're talking to your fast track manager and engineer saying, what do you think? What are the pros and cons? What are the risks of doing one way or another? Um, you know, some people say, hey, we want to migrate seven days a week. Really? Do you? We, we're, we're here all week. We'll migrate mail for you every day if you want. But can your help desk handle that on you know, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all the way through the week? Or do you want to do, do, you want to do something different? Again, we'll give you an opinion about it. We'll give you the experience we've had. But in the end, it's, it's your decision. Um, let's go to the next slide. So, so let's pretend for a moment you're on the service. How do you continue to drive value? Or in the case of something like, you know, you may, if you, for those that haven't used SharePoint, but now you're starting to use SharePoint, how do you drive people to use SharePoint? How do you try to change some value? Um, and some of these things are, uh, you know, again, what the one gentleman asked about, you know, well, do you have material? Do you have, you know, gamification? Do you have, and, and what that's really referring to is, let's go to the next slide, is how do you create excitement about moving to the service? Now think about this, right? You know, in your organizations today, when you've done upgrades, did you try to get people excited about it? Or was it just like, okay, yeah, going from Windows 7 to Windows 8, great. Windows 8 to Windows 10, okay, fine. Hey, we've upgraded the mail system, and everyone came in the next day and said, yep, still works, awesome, good job. Right? Nothing exciting about it, but we get excited about Office 365, not because it's what we do for a living, but there's so much more. You know, it's no longer about a mailbox in the cloud. It, or a 50 gig mailbox, assuming you didn't have 50 gig mailbox, or didn't we just bump it to 100? I think, it, I think yeah. it's now even a 100 gig mailbox. Um, it's all the other things you can do. I mean, how many have seen the analytics that come, for those that are on Exchange, how many have seen the analytics, right? So you can go and figure out who do you spend most time communicating with? How much time do you spend reading email? How much time do you spend reading email while you're in meetings? I mean, there's some. Right, yeah. That's, I hate that stat because who, I'm. Who here terrible. actually pays attention to every meeting they're in? Come on, let's be honest. Um, but once you're on the service, once you're in that ecosystem between Exchange and SharePoint, whether it's your data loss protection conversations, whether it's analytics, whether it's just having all your information in one place, having everything work across your mobile devices, the minute you start getting onto the service completely, all of a sudden there's a lot of possibilities. So that's where the real excitement comes from, and that's the reason why we say, hey, when you're moving to Office 365, don't just make it, okay, Tuesday, your mail's moving, right? Try to get a little bit more momentum in the business. And we do that for a couple of reasons. One, um, who doesn't want to wear a cape? I mean, come on, be real. That's, uh, that's but, part of the 20,000 seat and above, actually. Yeah. Not only do you get Marty, but Marty shows up with, with cape, that yeah. outfit on. Um, <laughs> I don't know, what was it, the Usain Bolt? I don't know. Anyway, um, so, but part, part of it becomes, one, the minute you're on the service, the adoption drive doesn't end there. It has to keep going. Two, you're going to have change. So you don't want people to say, ta-da, we're, we're on the service, we're on new exchange, then all of a sudden, new things are coming. How do you keep that momentum going? How do you get people excited about it? Um, for the businesses that are larger and probably a little more political, there might be somebody who didn't want to move to the service. <laughs> what was that? A few, hundred. a few hundred. So what happens is, you know, the executive says, hey, we're going to move. And then all of a sudden, the, the naysayers start saying, wow, well, look, we had all these help desk ticket calls. Or we had all these problems. We had all these issues. Now all of a sudden, you have negative emotion, right? So instead of people being positive, right, this is standard human nature, instead of being positive about the move and the change and what's going to happen, they're kind of griping and moaning and complaining, which gives people an opportunity to say, let's not go, let's go back, which now you've spent the time, the energy, you're not gonna get the value of the service, you're not gonna get all the benefits. Whereas if you have some people walk in the halls and saying, hey, you know, this is good, let me show you the cool things that I'm doing, let me show you the great app I have on my mobile device that I didn't have before, now all of a sudden you have people who say, well, when am I going on to the service? And, and, and is this manipulation? You bet it is, right? But it's trying to get the business, the organization, focused on the positive change it's going to have versus, oh, it's change, and oh, it's complaining, and oh, we hit a speed bump. Because, you know, back to your question around risk, you're not going to move hundreds or thousands of users and not hit a couple of speed bumps along the way. It's how you react to it. So you need your champions. Yeah. 
Well, and anytime you're making, anytime you're making changes, it's, there's pain, right? And, and you, have to, um, you have to give users something for that. And, and one of the great things about this platform is there is so many, there's so many features, so many capabilities. There, there's no way that there isn't something here that's gonna make every person in your organization's job better. You just have to figure out what that is and be able to communicate that to them. Um, you know, Teams, it, I don't know, has anybody looked at Teams yet? We started playing with it, right? Pretty, pretty, pretty good stuff, right? I mean, it's, it's a great centralized place for people to be able to do chats, have kind of a permanent history of that chat, do some file storage. Actually, I can see a, a future where Teams is maybe the first workload that gets deployed because that then becomes the basis for, you, for the rest of your deployments. And, and that's where people go to get information and, and you know, part of your team is that rollout. So um, you know, those are capabilities that people just love. I, you know, they don't have to contact IT anymore to create a group for them. They can, they can do this self-service and start collaborating on their own um, because, because your users know who they need to work with and, and this gives them the mechanism to be able to work the way they want to work. Right? So. Um, so build a sustainable champion community, create a <laughs> Best Buy Ninjas, if you want to go see how Best Buy created some momentum and some excitement around it. Um, I, I remember a couple of years back, I helped move the American Red Cross over. You know, American Red Cross is made up of thousands of people, volunteers across the country, lots of char um, or groups and charters, or um, I'm drawing a blank on the word, but um, different, organ different parts of the organization. The CEO of the Red Cross could not send an email to everybody. It's just too many disparate systems. She, she just couldn't do it. So they actually named their program. It was the One Email Program. Sounds really exciting. But they had posters up all over the place. They, had, they gave out bottles, you know, water bottles and mouse pads and all sorts of things saying, look, we are on a mission together. They made it a mission in order to achieve, to fulfill what they're trying to do, which is one email from the CEO to the people and then be, the ability for them to be able to be responsive to the communities that they're trying to serve, right? So make your transition a mission if you have to. Make it excitement so that people know that something is happening. Let's go to the next slide. Again, so the gentleman asked, you know, up on the site, a lot of variety of information that's up there. Um, these are ideas, these are templates, these are starting points. You know, customize, change, do what you want with it. Uh, the goal is to create that momentum and that excitement. Some of it may be too much, depending on your organization. You know your organization best. And, but for others, it might be, you know, hey, we've never done something like this before. Let's do something different, right? It could be, it could be anything, whether it's a gamification, which is always a, always a pretty good one, um, or just trying to find some way to, you know, we're going to create some swag, right? When was the last time you created swag to give out to your users for moving to a new IT solution? And their goal, of course, is not to make it about IT, but to make it about productivity and you know, how your business gets their business done. Yes, sir? No. <laughs> so I can give you my t-shirt if you want. <laughs> I swear I only put it on this morning. I didn't wear it yesterday. Um, so yeah. I guess if you come to a free Microsoft event, you don't get stuff. Is that how that works? I don't know. <laughs> um, but now that I mention it, there, now that you mention it, there's really no swag. Yeah. Okay, well, no, I didn't get any swag. Um, let's go to the next slide. Yeah, but I mean, I, you know, and, and you know, if you guys are like me, you know, every time I start a project, every time I have anything, the first thing I do is I go look on the web for who's done this before, and you know, they've got a project plan. Somebody's done this, and, and they've posted a project plan I can use, because I hate building it from scratch. That's, that's what Microsoft has done for you. you know, so, so you don't have to go scour the web. You know where you can go and get a lot of this material to begin with. So we talked about this a little bit already, right? You know, it's not one and done. It's an iterative process. You did it with Exchange. You had great success. Great. Do the same thing you've done with SharePoint or Skype or whatever workloads. Again, it gets back to your success plan. You may have bought the suite knowing that, hey, we're going to do Exchange, SharePoint, OneDrive, and Office Pro Plus, but we're not going to do Skype for three more years because we just entered a multi-year commitment with Cisco. OK. That's a decision, but at least you've made a decision, a very definitive decision, so you've put parameters around the success of your deployment and your rollout. Um, you know, again, you know, this talks a little bit about fast track, what we've done, um, customers of every size all over the planet. I think we're, I don't know, does it say how many languages? I know I have counterparts all over the world. Well, 12 languages. 12 languages, there you go. Um, and you know, we are continuing to evolve and take the feedback of the success that we've had and saying, okay, what other things should we bring to the service 
and to the benefit. Martin only speaks 11 of those, by the way, <laughs> 11 of the 12. Yeah, I barely speak English. Um, just some examples of customers, uh, you know, it's, it's a who's who. Um, you know, I don't know who, you're, who, who you guys are representing, but enterprise rent a car, okay. Are you working with Fast Track currently? Have you bought the service? Huh, we should figure out why. <laughs> Say again? Yeah, yeah, nah. <laughs> um, so, and, and even if you've already gone down the path and you're working with MCS or a partner, if you own the licenses, you're entitled to it. So then it's always trying to figure out how do we work together. And, 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 if, and if you're thinking to yourself, oh, well, these guys have a pretty prescriptive process, which we do, and we're already, you know, the train's already left the station, so if we're going to get them involved, now all of a sudden we're going to have to stop, we're going to have to go all the way back, start at the very beginning. We're pretty good at trying to figure out you know what, if you've already left the station and things are happening, we're gonna to try to figure out how to jump on your train and add value. If your train's about to drive off a cliff because of decisions that were made after we start having these conversations, we're not shy, we're gonna speak up and try to warn you. <laughs> um, but at the same time, right, you know, our job is to be collaborative about it, not to basically stop what you're already doing. So we can talk more about that. Let's go to the next slide. Um, just more stuff, and there's a, there's, there's a, you know, in the last few minutes, I'd rather spend the time t taking questions. You, you could say it, um, it's a slide about a CSC, Computer Science Corporation, if you're familiar with them. 55,000 email, 55,000 users coming from Lotus Notes, fairly complex global business. Great success story about how we move them quickly, but, yeah, I don't think you want to see another video at this point. I think that's. Yeah, next, uh, video next, we can yeah. skip it. Yeah, let's go past it. Skip the video. A um, couple of things. One, roadmap.office.com. That is the roadmap you go to to see what's changing in the service. Since Fast Track is part of the service, our changes, new capabilities, new features, new benefits, are also listed in the Office 365 roadmap. So I think some of these, like Box to Online, is already done. Uh, Office Mobile, some of these, I think all the ones that say new are early, already been rolled out. We were debating the other day whether changing it or not, but the point is we're continuously evolving the service. The benefit that we provide is part of Fast Track. So if you go to roadmap.office.com, not only will you see what's going on with Office and Office 365, you'll see the benefits that we provide as well. A um, couple more links, Fast Track and adoption. Um, and apparently you can play the superhero IT pro hero game, which I have no idea what that is. Um, but I gotta go try it. Maybe, though. maybe you can win some swag if you go to the site. I, I, I don't know. Super. Um, so I mean, that's that's it for for us. Um, what else can we answer? What else do you want to talk about? I mean, we'll stay as long as you want, or until they throw us out for the next session. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely right. So, um, you know, Marty said at the beginning, he's a, a Fast Track program manager working with customers who have already bought over 20,000 seats. My role is a Fast Track architect, so I'm, I'm technically a pre-sales resource. Um, I work with a lot of people that have already purchased, but, uh, but absolutely. That, so that's my role, is to work with customers that are in the process, thinking about it, want to know how Fast Track will fit into their, their plan on how to roll out. So, uh, yeah, you can absolutely request a, a Fast Track architect to be engaged on your, uh, on your account. And, uh, and we, I will happily go through the entire thing with you. So let's, I always hate to leave these things and not be perfectly clear and transparent. If you are doing work with an, an enterprise product group, partner group, EPG account, again, that's an account of a certain size, then yes, mm. uh, these resources are available to you. Yes. If you're in that corporate account, small, medium business market, we're not. Again, just being very clear, I don't want to... You know, I have 500 seats and I heard I'm gonna get a fast track architect to come in. No. Then it becomes, it's a self-service activity. And then once you purchase, you will get a fast track manager and engineer assigned to you. Um, and then what he's referring to is through the customer success portal, where you go and you say, hey, here's, here's what we're thinking that we're gonna do, here's how we're gonna do it, you should be working with your account team on that. 
There's a button in there that says request fast track architect. They could push it, you could push it, anybody can push it, and when it does, you know, satellites whirl, and basically somebody like Ross will get assigned to the account to assist. Yeah. Other? We had another question here somewhere. Yes, sir. Um, think of a fast track manager kind of like a program ma or a project manager, excuse me, um, although th they're managing our side of things. So their job is to coordinate with you when we're going to get together. Their job is to make sure you have access to the IP and the information. They're SMEs in onboarding. They're the subject matter experts on that. Um, where they stop is if you want to get into a deep discussion of, hey, how do we go about setting up hybrid? How do we set up Active Directory or AD Connect? They're going to look to the fast track engineer who can go as deep and technical in those topics as you want to. If the fast track engineer assigned is, just happens to not be an expert, I mean, none of us are experts in everything. They're not an expert in Skype, but you have Skype questions. That fast track manager is going to look within the fast track organization and say, hey, my customer needs some Skype expertise. And they'll coordinate that activity to, to bring the resource to you. So when you sign up, you get an assigned fast track manager and engineer. Let's be, again, let's be super transparent and clear. These people are working across 15 to 20 potentially other customers. Right? So they are not available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Right? So what you'll see, and you, you saw through the slides the term workshop. We'll hold workshops and talk about certain topics. We'll make arrangements and say, hey, let's get together on Tuesday at 3 o'clock with your team, and we'll go deep dive. So there's always that question of coordinating the schedules of these resources who are working across multiple customers. If it then becomes, hey, we're having this conversation, but now we need to go get an expert in a different topic or to go in a, you know, we're not getting the, the progress we want to get, it could take one or two or three days for them to go and find somebody and then coordinate their schedule to your schedule. Right? So again, that's the reason to have the plan, and we always want to be thinking about how to go down the path of getting a plan. The other thing I'll add is, um, there are times where we're trying to work with you to resolve a problem, and the problem just gets beyond the boundaries of what we can do, and we would have you open a premier support case. Because again, there's an army of Microsoft you know, escalation engineers, technical engineers. If something has to flow its way up to the product groups, depending on what the problem is, that all happens through premier. So you know, we will take things as far as we can. We're pretty good at triaging most issues. But the issue might be, you know, might not be in the service, it might be with something else that's beyond the boundaries of what we can do, specifics with your firewall or something else, and we'll kick that over to Premier. We don't, we don't want to spend days trying to solve a problem without bringing in the rest of the assets that we have as being Microsoft. Yes, ma'am. What is the difference between fast track and Oh, the digital transformation service? So I believe that's part of um, Microsoft Consulting Services, right? So they are coming up with digital transformation experts in order to help you with things more broadly than just onboarding to Office 365, right? Because when you look at our cloud properties, it could be CRM, it could be Azure. Azure is a mile wide and a mile deep. Um, so it's a different set of services, and in some cases, they're helping you strategically figure out how do you bring your business into a digital transformation, a cloud-based type world. This, this focus is, is, again, a customer success service exclusively focused for Office 365, which, by the way, does include Intune and, and EMS and some other things, but it's primarily Office 365, the productivity suite. Mm -hmm. Part of it, right? So we would certainly talk to you about security things related to Office 365, but if you want to have conversations around how do we as a business change our security policies, which might include your on-premises, your cloud, it might include your infrastructure, your physical boundaries, that's beyond an onboarding migration activity associated with Fast Track. Yes, sir. Uh, 
It depends. <laughs> it's a consulting answer, right? Did you expect anything else? Um, I've seen organizations that have that do it vertically, department, 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 um, and then I've seen other organizations who are just doing it very horizontally based on time zones or based on other things. Um, a lot of it really depends on the organization. So, for example, if the organization is, um, if, if you have to roll out other things, other post-migration changes and activities, because it's your accounting department or your HR department, you may want to isolate it down to a single department. If, um, if it's a question of, hey, you know, certain groups are going to be heavy mobile users, let's get all the mobile users done first because you, you know, maybe you're moving from good technologies or AirWatch or something to Intune, you may want to go more horizontally and take it then based on the functional rules or the functional devices that people are using. And sometimes it, it can even depend on you know, whether you're deploying a single workload or multiple workloads, right? So if you're yeah. trying to do multiple workloads at a time, a lot of times, um, you know, it, th that's going to be a change where, um, where departmentally will make more sense, where if it's just email, then, then geographic makes a lot of sense sometimes. So, I mean, those are all determining factors. And so, for example, you may, so I've done some work with some large retailers, I won't tell you who, and they said, well, the, most of the retail workers are going to be OWA-based, Outlook Web Access-based, so let's just focus on getting all the stores done first, and then we'll come back and focus on the internal headquarter departments, because smaller mailboxes, you, know, you don't really have profiles, you don't have heavy clients, they don't really have mobile devices. So they were looking for a big win to move a bunch of users and start deprecating a bunch of infrastructure, and knowing that IT internal headquarters is going to be a bigger, a bigger hill to climb. So then that became a business decision about what, you, what you're trying to accomplish. Others might say, <laughs> screw them, let's focus on the headquarter guys first, let's do the big stuff first. Again, it all depends what you're trying to get from a win perspective. I was waiting for that question. That's, that's good. So you remember the slide that came up and it said, Microsoft does this and customers and partners do this? So our answer, our generic answer, and, and again, mileage varies, but our generic answer is if it's the customer responsibility and the customer doesn't have the time, the talent, the, the people to do the work, it's a great partner opportunity. There are things in the service description which are very clear that we don't do. If you, if you need to upgrade your Active Directory structure, infrastructure, awesome. You don't see it in our service descriptions. If you want to update your desktops, great. If you have custom solutions that were built on top of SharePoint, another great opportunity. Um, adoption and change management, we provide lightweight guidance, but we don't go and create all that material that you were asking about before. Um, so there's a handful of things that we are here to partner with the customer's project program teams. We are part of your team. If you don't have a team, we suggest, again, this is where the planning and the honest conversations, mitigating that risk way up front, well, who are you bringing in, right? I mean, we're telling you, you, you can't do this with you know, one full-time guy and three part-time people if you're you know, in the hundreds of, or thousands of users. It'll never happen. So where are you getting the resources to do the work that has to be done? And we would look to partners or Microsoft services. Or, and from our perspective, I don't know if there's any MCS guys in the room, um, we don't care, right? As long as the customers are getting the assistance they need so that we can be an effective partner from Fast Track with the customer. And if that's customer and partner, bless you, awesome. Yeah, and a lot of advisory work. I mean, you know, where, where you can, you know, if, if you can get advisory work where you can go in and help, help drive adoption and active usage by doing, you know, stakeholder interviews and meeting department heads to, to really find good business cases, that's, that's absolutely something Fast Track just isn't built to do. So those are great use cases for partners to get involved. Yes, sir. So the fast track material, right, the same material you see for when you go to office.com or docs.microsoft.com or whatever, it's the same material. There is no um, fast track working with a partner without working through the customer. The benefit is because of the customer license. 
So you can't, so the tricky part is you can say, hey, I'm helping a 25 seat customer, can I engage Fast Track because I'm a partner with 500 people. Doesn't work that way, right? It's tied to the license because this, this is just part of the service. But it's the same material, the same content. Um, I mean, you have some partner ecosystems and Yammer groups and some other things where you guys can share experiences. Uh, just like, you know, Microsoft Services has their own internals. Right. But the same material, the same guidance, the same content, the same wizards. So, other questions? Right. What fast track dollars do you want to be needed for fast track dollars? I have no idea what fast track dollars are. Yeah, so fast track's a benefit that's included. There's no, no cost associated to, to you, but there's no... Ever. And you can't put a price tag on... We're priceless. You can't put a price tag on us. Um, there is no dollar associated to it. Hey, instead of getting fast track, can you give me 50 grand? Now, what you will see is there are offers up on the site where we might say there are some offers that come through fast track or through um, other parts of Microsoft that say, hey, if you are, you know, agree to do something like with Skype or OneDrive, you might get some additional dollars for something. So there's always offers. I feel like a car dealership, right? Go to the services department, click Limited on offers time. before you go and get your, bring your car in for service. So there are always offers, things that are happening. Um, and I don't know if that's what you meant by fast track dollars per se. I mean, our account manager said you can get some fast track dollars which you can use uh, to get some service from the partners. It, yeah, again, take a look at the fast track site and look under offers. Because yeah. um, every now and again, I mean, let's just be candid about it. If we say, hey, we're not seeing the uptick in Skype or the uptick in this, we might put out an incentive. Um, and it's not necessarily a fast track. Fast track dollars is just an interesting way of phrasing it. Yeah, well, hey, mm. sales guys. Um, <laughs> but it, it could be a, you know, hey, there's an incentive that you can use with partners. And I'm sure the partner community sees them all the time. Um, you know, the tricky part is, you know, for the partners to get paid on that, there has to be an outcome, right? So, again, have that honest conversation up front, because otherwise your partner community, and he's shaking his head, are going to say, hey, we did all the work, but we're not getting paid because we didn't get to the outcome that we were looking for, right? Because we're not doing the incentives just for the heck of it. We're looking for outcomes. What else? Yes, ma'am. So the answer is yes. I'd be, the caveat would be um, don't look at this like premier support, right? You, you cannot talk to us for six months. You can pick up the phone and say, I'm having a problem. Give me an answer, right? We have a prescriptive approach. But if you're saying, hey, we're, we're on exchange, but we're not on SharePoint, let's re-engage Fast Track so that we can partner together, right? Then we're, we're there to work with you through that. And if you're saying, hey, let's touch base every three weeks, so, okay, that's, that's great. It's, it gets challenging if you call us on a Tuesday and we haven't spoken to you ever, and you ask us 15 questions. You know, we're going to be sitting here saying, well, hang, hang on a second, because we don't know anything about you. We don't know where you've been. You know, it's like financial advice, right? You know, if, you don't, if you're not willing to invest the time, your mileage is going to, is going to vary. Yeah, that's yeah. how, that, right. That's, because what will happen is, when, when, again, if you're at the, I think it's 150 seats or 50 seats and higher, yeah. the fast track manager and engineer are going to be the same ones. It's not every time you call and you speak to somebody different. So, you know, we want to have that relationship, understand where you're going, and if we engage and then, you know, we're thinking, hey, you guys are ready to run, and they say, nope, we want to go slow or we want to pilot this way. If the advice is poor, we'll tell you. If it's just we have business conditions that say we need to do it this way, you know, again, we don't have a period of performance. We don't have our, our only measurement is getting is getting people on the service. I mean, that's it. We don't sell anything. We just want you on the service and using the service. Yep. Well, you ask a lot of questions. We'll come back to you though. Yes. Okay, okay it's up to you. I have no idea. <laughs> I don't even know what the user adoption pack is. Uh, all the tells you how many licenses you have and how many people are using it. Hmm. Well, you can get that from the usage reports inside the service, so I'm yeah. not sure what. Yeah. Is that, a, that might be a partner. Is that a partner specific thing? 
Mm. No clue. Okay. So. Yeah, yes, ma'am. I believe the decks are posted. I gave it, we gave it to yeah. him yesterday. Was, so now we posted it as a PDF, so you may not be able to see the videos, but quite honestly, go to the side to click around it's what the videos were. I have, n I'm assuming there'll be a follow-up to the tech summit saying, hey, get all content here. Right. So. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Right. So as I said, if you are a, a, what we call an EPG, a customer of a certain size, then you can go to the success portal, click the button, get a fast track architect to help. Or, or, or well, you have to buy the license. So the license is for the first thousand, and so no one yet is on. Doesn't matter. Then you can go into the portal, go into the success portal, say request help from Fast Track, and you know somebody will reach out and try to. We have this thing called the sign it right. So when you're requesting, we get thousands of requests a day. We want to make sure we get the right teams to the right people. So once you press the button, somebody will reach out, and then say you know. Since you're the, if you're the point of contact in the success portal, they'll reach out to you, let's say, and say, okay, hey, we got this request coming in. We want to make sure we know who you are. We want to make sure where you are. But you could have started absolutely nothing. Awesome. We're there for you. And, and frequently that's the case, right? I mean, yeah. the, the whole idea of this is to help you get onboarded. So. Right. But you have to buy the licenses. <laughs> okay, who hasn't asked a question yet? No. <laughs> okay. Anything else? I appreciate it. Thanks Thank for your time. Thank you very time. much, guys. Thank you.